parallels of the music industry and the professional wrestling industry are amazing. This is Tommy Dreamer, and welcome to Cage Side Noise. If you ever want to see the emotion that people have with professional wrestlers and musicians, their paths are exactly the same. You start off with the dream, then you work little, little venues, then you continue to build, 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 build till you reach the highest crescendo. Your WrestleMania is your sold out Madison Square Gardens. And then you go back to the smaller venues. This was an amazing interview that I got to sit down with Jamie Jasta, former host of Headbangers Ball, someone that I kind of actually knew, but I never met. Enjoy the interview. Hey, this is Tommy Dreamer for Louder Noise, my first time ever interviewing any single person in the world. I am losing my virginity to you. Really? You could do way better than me. <laughs> Jamie Jasta, hate breed, big time wrestling fan. We're getting to know each other, first time ever meeting each other. So here we go. I'm just happy you're alive because we watched so many videos of you on the Hate Breed tour bus in Europe. We got internet and every night me and frank i gotta give frank a shout out because he's he's more of an ecw head than i ever was and he probably has watched every match that you've ever had and i think it was one verse i want to say it was big daddy v yep and he squished me through the table. oh my god that's a whole lot of man how are you walking let me tell you even a better story <laughs> big daddy v rest in peace super a great guy and no one could realize just how agile he is as well as how big he is i mean dude he's a walking wall and i'm wrestling him and when he covered me he had uh me and mark henry call it the sweet meat where it's the part of your body when you once you start knocking around the 300 part there's part which it's supposed to be called a lat but it's sweet meat because it's the extra hanging on folds whatever you yeah. got Big Vist takes great care of me, kills me through a table, I'm fine. When he laid on me to cover me, his sweet meat legit went into my <laughs> mouth. Well, I've never had a man's like side lat fat in my mouth. And I couldn't breathe. And, uh. I was, and it was like, <laughs> it was the longest three seconds of someone just smothering you. And you know, you're also out of breath from the impact. And I could not wait for him to get off of me. When you work with some of those bigger guys, the only part that really probably hurts the most is when they go to get up and they use you to get up. And that was like, <gasps> ooh, I had no air left in me. Yeah, metal and hardcore and punk is like, we're looked at how like sports, in music, like we're looking at how like major sports looks at wrestling. Yeah. We're like the redheaded stepchild, kind of like the <laughs> outsiders, even though we put so much on the line. I mean, not as much, you know, as you guys do with your bodies, but we do. We leave it on the stage, blood, sweat, and tears, oh, yeah. or, or sometimes I've no tears. It. I saw it many a uh, night. And uh, it's like we're still, you know, out here doing it, trying to get the respect. But it's nice. Like, it, there's ebbs and flows. There's peaks and valleys, like you guys have seen with, with, with wrestling. And there's that DIY spirit. Like, you, someone like yourself, you can have your own promotion and have the support of all the diehard fans, and so can we with um you know metal and hardcore like i when i used to host headbangers ball that was like a peak but now it's you know 10 years later the show's been off the air and now we're hitting a peak again like there's new we have a new album coming out may 13th there's more synergy now with podcasts and the internet there's ways to 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 connect people and you're seeing a lot more synergy with with metal and wrestling and um and there's a lot of, there's a lot of crossover there yes absolutely do you when how old do you feel when people say i used to watch you yeah. when you used to host i get all the time like you know from from ecw or my favorite thing is man i was your biggest fan or you used to be great and yeah. i want to say yeah nothing's really changed except i've gotten older i'm sorry like right. how come and they're like no no no. but it's it, when people come up to you that's like the first thing you say and if you think about it, it's really an insult <laughs> you it kind of is when really it's, left -handed it's like they just don't do the work to just keep up with you like yeah. and and so you you're doing all these great things you're providing you know these awesome matches you're doing it yourself and then you can go and you can guess somewhere or you can go on all these podcasts just because you're not on their radar anymore it's like your real estate has lessened you see that a lot in metal too where it's like no we're, we're we just did arena shows with slipknot right. we're 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 coming up we're doing chicago open air 
uh, our night is sold out already. Like, just because you got out of it doesn't mean we're not still yeah. kicking ass. Or know? people think that once you leave WWE, then you retired. And I want to, you know, last year, even though I went back to WWE for like six weeks, I did 182 shows in one year. And, you know, even my wife was like, you know, you're semi retired, right? And you're also 45 years old. And she's like, you left WWE not to be on the road so much. And you're, and I was like, yeah, but, you know, we have twins. I have to pay bills. And, you yeah. know, and it, it's the same kind of for music. Or if you're not, you know, in the top, or if you're not working Madison Square Garden, or, you know, but say, yeah, guess what? But, you know, we're not working Madison Square Garden, but we just did 8,000. You know, it, our lives are so parallel. We start off slow. Look, work in the bars, working, you know, for us, it's the indie circuit. And then you catch your first break or you think what your first break is. And then, you know, you take it to the highest you can go. What I love the most about music, and it's all, it's, again, correlates with, re with wrestling, is that unity. Um, you could think of a match of that Tommy Dreamer had and be like, oh, man, I may have forgotten that. But when you hear a song or you hear, like, I hear Sandman, I could picture, you know, a group of people singing together and if you think about that that's no matter what race color creed ethnic background everyone comes together for a moment to celebrate you and your talent that's like me when i have my matches i love that feeling even if the outcome is predetermined it's the narrative behind it it's the drama leading up to it and then whatever transpires in the ring and even if it was like one of those nights where uh maybe you weren't victorious but it was like you survived right you it wasn't that you lost you won in the eyes of all these people that go oh my god he's the toughest son of a bitch out there because it you know there was a lot of those matches where we thought wow is they really are fucking each other up. yeah and uh yeah the with music with comedy with all different sorts of entertainment there are so many parallels because there's i see these comics out there yeah okay you're not at the level of a kevin hart selling out msg who is there's only like four yeah. people not everybody is gonna be like at the level of the rock or at the level of a metallica or whatever but the 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 working class entertainers are the ones that i feel like are are really in need of the support now and i always like that's why i like doing my podcast because i i put on a lot of working class bands that people will go oh i'm gonna check out that album it's, yeah because they're not getting that yeah. commercial radio play like metallica is gonna get and nothing against any of the big bands that are getting commercial radio play it's just like we made a choice to it was a little more extreme you know and it wasn't gonna be for everybody and we're happy with that but we do need the support it's not that we're lesser of uh, musicians or that we're, we're doing anything that's, um, you know, uh, offensive to anybody. But, you know, you've seen it with wrestling. It's like, if it doesn't have that broad reach, if you can't have the shirt in Walmart or whatever, it might not get the push that somebody that's squeaky clean yep. and accessible is gonna get. And You're so- You're not on TV, they, some, they forget about you. Right. That was, you know, when I agreed to do this, I said, well, I wanna eventually talk to wrestlers. Now, I mean, Social media is, you know, the, the internet changed music. Uh, social media has changed television. Uh, I, my biggest, what I want to do for is, hey, guess what? I was just with the one man gang. You know, I was with them for three days. One man gang, man, he was, you know, he main evented SummerSlam. He, he had all these bit, he's in his 50s now. He can't wrestle that much, but it's just like, hey, you know what? He, he's still alive. Hey, you know, he, he's, he was a prison guard. You know, he, he did all this stuff. And it's just like a way to people just remember or like social media. Hey, you can look him up on, he's active on Facebook. You know, uh, I don't know if that's the same way in the music world oh, where absolutely. you see these guys who headline Master Square Garden and then it's like, oh, what happened to them? And, and some of it's life choices, but other one, you know, Gang wasn't. Gang just, he actually, he Rob Van Dam broke his leg in ECW and he could never return. That's really cool that you honor the legacy of those guys. And we try to do that with metal and hardcore for sure. I mean, we, when we blew up like in the early 2000s, we always tried to take out the bands that influenced us. Like we took Agnostic Front on tour, we took Sick of It All on tour, we took Biohazard on a bunch of shows and, and a lot of those bands and, um, and still would and still will. Um, but there was bands that gave us the opportunity. And there was a lot of times where we had to go out and be the support band to get to that place. Like we supported Motorhead, we supported Slayer. Uh, we, you know, we did countless tours with Slayer and, and, and bigger bands. And even recently we went out, you know, with Five Finger Death Punch, who's like a, a very big mainstream rock metal act. 
who that was really nice for them to like acknowledge us like here you go you're gonna play huge theaters and huge arenas and we're gonna expose you to our whole new generation of people that had no idea i hosted headbangers ball had no idea i was in hatred for 20 years but were psyched to hear some heavy shit and go oh wow this is right. this is cool and so um in europe they honor the legacy a little bit more like we did two shows with metallica and metallica was they put creator on right before them you know one of the big four yeah. of the teutonic german thrash bands and i thought man that was so fucking cool of metallica to give creator that that slot on those shows and and uh you know that's something that i would do now like if we ever get the opportunity to come back and do a big new york show of course i'd want to try to put i mean we used to do it i mean we had sick with all on our show at roseland sub-zero suffocation who was you know legendary uh, death metal band from long island i mean we always tried to honor the legacy whereas i think with wrestling now maybe the new kids coming up with the um the way that youtube is like like i was saying with our guitar player frank we can frank we can go on youtube and watch all these old matches and and see all the stuff and go wow that's cool maybe new kids will do that like how they do it in heavy metal where you read the thanks list and you go i want to check out this band and i want to see this record from then i guess it's just it's just a different way of sharing it i remembering all these guys when they were just starting out and you know my, my friend we were talking off camera you know their band they just got back together and you know they were gonna start touring more and then some of the early bickering continued right away and it's you know you look at let's say motley crew motley crew just said all right we'll see you later i hate when bands do that by the way when they have the retirement tours to come out and i will sue motley crew they signed <laughs> after dates i will come after you guys i know the label if you guys do another tour i will come after you anyway um, it's false advertising. Yeah. You know, you get your. You want, I want. I, that's it. Say goodbye. You know, Ric Flair. When Ric Flair said goodbye at, at uh, WrestleMania, I was saying to myself, and I, I sat there purposely in the crowd, and I cried like a baby. And then I was like, he'll come back. You know, he hasn't had a match, but you look at somebody like Shawn Michaels, he hasn't. Yeah. You know, and uh, I respect that. I respect that more. It's, it's my last hurrah. Right. Barbara Streisand does that all the time. I'm afraid to sing. I can't sing. I'm going to charge you. $2,000 to yeah. come see me and all of a sudden she comes out and sing. Have you done that yet? No. Good. No, Don't ever we never do did that. the fake farewell Don't tour. Don't ever piss off your audience. I saw Kiss on one of the farewell tours and then they came back with Ace and then I went to that show and I was like, "Ah, oh, fuck." But yeah, no, we 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 would never do that. But there's there is something to be said though about some of those markets where you go to like some of those cities where they it, it loses its luster and i always thought like what if you threatened it like if you said like like say you you made this huge investment in house of hardcore and you go to some place and and then you don't get the turnout and you're like all right listen we're gonna give you one more chance <laughs> you could say like <laughs> we're retiring your town like you could do that type of tour like it's a farewell tour but not for us right it's farewell to you if you don't come out if you don't, we're gonna we're gonna get rid we're, of it. right we're gonna retire machine head did that once they fired san diego nice they after the Fuck show you, san diego and i couldn't believe it i was like that's hard like that takes balls for a band to go you know what we're done we've tried it you guys never supported us they, he said they had a show with arch enemy and like half the crowd left after arch enemy and then they had like 200 people and after that show he goes you know what san diego you're fired but i guess they've gone back now and now it was big because there's been it's been like 12 years and so people are like "Fuck, they're coming back this one time we better go support them we got to have you on my podcast i'll, I'll ask I will you about definitely, all definitely definitely do it frank says he partied with rob van dam at cleveland agora that is, you were probably there that is and, very much possible yeah. <laughs> if you had uh, a little oregano substance you would probably become Rob Van Dam's friend. Your legacy, how would you want to be remembered? Just remembered as putting smiles on people's faces. Like, I love it when people leave the show. It might be all, it look, might look violent and crazy and, and uh, scary from the outside with all these people smashing into each other and diving on each other and, and coming out bloody, but they're coming out bloody with a smile on their face. <laughs> and, uh, you know, they go for that hour or two hours, they say, I had no bills, I had no problems, I had no issues. And, uh, you know, I just want to be remembered as one of those, you know, I, I think I speak for everybody in the band, you just want to be remembered as one of those bands that really took you to a different place and 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 push you to th think about things in life differently i can say no more thank you very much thank you that was actually one of my favorite interviews because i really stepped out of my comfort zone and i got to interview someone outside of wrestling but now it's the favorite time of the show what are you giving away today we're giving away hate reads newest cd the concrete confessional and let me tell them how you 
You have lint on your titty. Excuse me. Sorry. I know you couldn't see that. Yeah. We'll have to retake on that one. And how you win it, you got to tell us your favorite hate breed or Jamie Jasta story. Follow us on all forms of social media. Like us on Twitter. Like us on Instagram. Love us on Facebook. And subscribe to Louder Noise TV. I'm Tommy Dreamer. Thank you for watching.